Catherine Calvin ist Senior Climate Advisor und leitende Wissenschaftlerin bei der NASA. Sie koordiniert die Klimaforschung der Weltraumagentur. Wie kann das Weltall dabei helfen, das Klima auf der Erde besser zu verstehen? Und wie ist es, für die NASA zu arbeiten? Wir haben Catherine bei ihrem Besuch in Wien in der Österreichischen Akademie der Wissenschaften getroffen. So nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. My first question would be, I was wondering, because it's not quite usual working for NASA, was it your dream since the beginning? Have you always wanted to work for the agency? I have always liked NASA and admired NASA. So the first time I ever visited a NASA center was when I was a kid. Uh, but I didn't realize this job existed in, until recently. And so I'm really excited to be here and to be in this role. You are a senior climate advisor and NASA's chief scientist. What is your job like? Uh, so a lot of my job is about connecting within the agency, either on science or on climate, and about engaging externally, so telling people about what NASA does in terms of climate or science, either, you know, other partners we might collaborate with or the public like you, um, and I also provide advice to the administrator. Can you give some examples? So a lot is just sort of thinking about what we do and how it connects. So there's a lot of work that happens in one part of the agency that's related to something that happens in another. And part of my job is to know about that um, and to help make those connections and to help um, further them in the future. Why is NASA in general interested in climate change research? So we know from observations on and above the Earth's surface that climate is changing and it's affecting people and ecosystems everywhere. And a lot of the, the work and capabilities that NASA has can help inform people. So we've been observing the Earth for decades um, so we can see how it's changed over time. And we have a commitment to making that information publicly available so everyone else can see what we see. How can the space help us understanding our climate? One of the nice things about space, when we're using satellites in orbit, they look at all of the Earth. So they're orbiting all around. They can see um, oceans, they can see land, atmosphere, and all around the world, not just where we are. Um, and that makes it really nice to use space to understand the Earth. And so we have a number of satellites that help engage on that. And we use that in combination with measurements made on the ground. But measurements made on the ground are often sparse. They're just where we have capabilities to measure where by measuring from space we can see all of the world. So it's important to have the observations from space and from others too. Yes, they work together very nicely and so we, we work with people that do um, ground-based measurements, some at NASA, some at other organizations, and then we fill in the rest of the world with space-based measurements. Let's talk a little bit about climate change. Um, what's, what does the science tell us? What is the status quo? So we know climate is changing. So temperatures in 2022, um, according to NASA records, were tied for the fifth warmest. Um, and the last nine years have been the warmest since modern record keeping began. Um, and we're seeing a lot of changes that come along with temperature that impact people. So we're seeing declines in Arctic sea ice. We're seeing loss of ice sheet mass. We're seeing increases in sea level and more extreme events like heat waves, heavy precipitation events and wildfires. And those are impacting people everywhere. Does this frighten you? Climate change definitely presents some challenges, but as a scientist, I like to focus on what we know and what we can learn and what questions we can answer um, and continuing to advance the science, advance our understanding and share it with the world. There's a lot of evidence and but obviously there isn't done enough to tackle climate change. And according to the IPCC, the window to secure a livable future is closing. What would you say, because you work as an advisor between universities and the agency and governments, what would you say, how can science find the way into politics? So a lot of what I think, you know, in the science policy interface, the role of the scientist is to provide information. So a lot of what the IPCC does is write reports that are policy relevant. So they assess all of the science we know about climate change and they, they come up with um, a, a key findings that can help inform policymakers. And as a scientist um, in, a, in a role that's um, externally facing, part of my job is to communicate that, to, to tell people what we know. And so in terms of climate change, we know it's changing, we know it's driving those changes, and we know a lot about what options are being developed that can help address some of climate change's um, impacts um, or limit warming in the future. What would you say, how powerful is science? Because obviously there isn't done enough right now. 
Science is really powerful in helping us understand the world and helping us structure how we ask questions about it. But it can only tell you what we know and what we understand. What we do is where you get into policy. And I think as a scientist, my role is to bring that science to policymakers. And so we can tell people about how climate is changing, how it's impacting them, how much it might change in the future, and what different options and scenarios might be um, in order to address that. NASA is also interested in um studying Mars. Is there a planet P? Will we ever go there? So NASA's interest in other planets is for science. So we are, we have, um, through Artemis, we're going back to the moon in preparation to go to Mars, but for science. Um, and so we're trying to understand that. And we can learn a lot about, about Earth from other planets. So we've learned a lot about the greenhouse effect and ozone by studying Venus, and we can apply that to Earth. Um, Mars has also gone, undergone some um, a lot of climate change in the past that we are still learning about. And it's not driven by the same thing on Earth, the climate change we're seeing has been driven by human activity, but we can learn from Mars and understand that. And so when we're looking out at other planets, we're looking to understand our solar system and also looking to understand Earth. But it's not an alternative. For us, it is a science. Um, we are learning. Yeah. And what would your advice be for people who want to make a change? So I think everyone's options are different. Where you live, where you work, what you um, what you have available to you is different depending on where you are around the world. And I think what science can tell you is you know what those options might mean. Um, and one of the things that I think um, people often uh, aren't aware of is that you can actually help us with our science. And so that's something people that can do um, to engage in climate is to actually help. We have a very active citizen science um, program at NASA where people anywhere around the world can help us do science um, just with their cell phone. Um, so help us understand clouds or help characterize coral reefs. And we use that information to further our own knowledge and to share that with the world. And besides um, citizen science projects? And so there, you know, what science can tell you is about, you know, depending on where you live, what the different options are available to you. Each part of the world is facing different challenges. Um, so some parts of the world are really vulnerable to sea level rise and coastal erosion. And there's different options to address that than places where they're vulnerable to wildfire um, or drought. And so thinking about where you are really matters when, when addressing impacts of climate change. Do you think you, you can make a change as a scientist? I think the role of science is to bring information to people um, and help people understand what's happening where they are. When you look into the future, what do you see? How do you feel? So I feel, I think climate change definitely presents some challenges. We're seeing those every year and they're, they're, they're getting more intense. We're seeing more extreme events. Um, and, and, you know, we are aware of that. We understand what's driving it and we understand, um, a lot of the science behind that. But we're also seeing more people engaged in it. And so having more people, more ideas, more people thinking about how to innovate and address, um, climate change is really helpful. So other scientists go to the streets and you sound very optimistic. I view my role in this is, is, as a scientist is helping understand and helping communicate. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Yeah, thank you.